Ya kalau saya bertemu orang kita bahari. Bertemu orang kita bahari, senior medical lecturer, medicine and health sciences faculty of UPM. She served as the UPM University's from 2010 to 2011. She is actively involved in the teaching and training of undergraduate and postgraduate students. So without further ado, let us welcome Dr. Nora Pita Bahari to give her talk entitled MRI Changes and Occur in the Newer Degenerative Disorder. My dear, it's been a super cheap and more personal. Thank you. So, uh, Assalamualaikum, very good morning. So, my topic today, <coughs> MRI changes, uh, so, so uh, MRI changes in the uh, neurodegenerative uh, disease. So, I just give uh, some uh, important uh, diseases that we always encounter. So this is my uh, outline of the uh, presentation. So I will touch a bit on introduction, MRI protocols in our hospital, and uh, clinic, some clinical history, and also the presentation, the uh, pathogenesis. Sorry. Okay, the pathogenesis and so on. Okay. So I uh, imaging of the brain uh, of patient uh, suspected. Uh, or having neurodegenerative condition is the common and uh, challenging practice. So this is uh, particularly true uh, for the patient who exhibits subtle or equivocal signs and symptoms, as the imaging findings in these cases are also often uh, subtle and equivocal. So in many instances, by the time imaging findings become uh, clear cut, the patient has already pre presented with clear clinical symptoms. So uh, we uh, always correlate our uh, the clinical presentations with our MRI findings. So that's why we need a very detailed uh, history for the patient with neurodegenerative disease. And the diagnosis has been established or at least uh, strongly suggested. So although there are a great many conditions, uh, if you go to the list of neurodegenerative diseases, a uh, very long list, uh, uh, but even more which can result in cognitive impairment, the majority of the patients with significant cognitive impairment will have uh, one, I will touch on the cognitive impairment later on, will have one of a relatively small group and uh, familiarity with them is crucial. This include the Alzheimer, vascular disease, uh, vascular dementia, posterior cortical atrophy, dementia of the Lee bodies, uh, prototemporal uh, lobar degeneration, or FTLD. So furthermore, there are several uncommon to rare conditions uh, with specific imaging findings that are considered as classic, okay? So this uh, uh, could spell checkup disease, progressive supranuclear palsy, or PSP, multiple system, system atrophy, or MSA, Parkinson's disease, Parkinson's disease, corticobasal degeneration, and also cardiacal. So this is our MRI protocol in uh, uh, some. So uh, this is what we do okay, for all the neurodegenerative uh, diseases. That's why the indication for MRI is very important because if uh, our radiographer look at the, uh, the indication, they will follow the guidelines that we have. So we have this is for neurodegenerative, we have another for infection, for tumor, so that's why the indication needs to be uh, uh, clear. Okay. So um, this is some of the image from uh, our MRI. Uh, here we have uh, uh, three Tesla MRI, uh, Philips MRI. So the MRI protocol uh, we use is uh, 3D uh, T1. Um, this is a uh, uh, so this is the uh, sagittal uh, T1, uh, but uh, when we do three uh, dimensional, so we can get a uh, volumetric uh, images in uh, both. This is like Dr. Uh, Prof. Priya already explained to you. This is sagittal, this is adhesive image, this is the coronal image. So uh, this is how the different uh, uh, cuts looks like, okay? So uh, we have uh, 3D, uh, 3D T1, axial T2, uh, or flare. So this is, uh, I have here the flare. So flare is a fluid suppression. So we suppress the 
CSF. So it looks like this. So when we suppress the, the CSF, we can see the changes in the brain more clearly. Okay. So uh, then we have coronal P2. Okay, we have coronal P2 here. Okay, then if you want to do flat, then we just uh, do the uh, fluid separation for this uh, sequence. Other than that, we have uh, three dimension because this is a three, three, uh, three Tesla, so we can do quite a number of three dimension uh, images. So this is another uh, view, uh, another sequence, what we call diffusion weighted images. We have here uh, a DWI and also ABC. So in the UI and uh, ABC, we can see if the lesion or the findings is restricted diffusion or not, uh, so that uh, we can give uh, uh, we can shortlist the differential diagnosis. So this is another uh, sequence, which is the uh, uh, here is the SWI, but a certain uh, uh, machine they don't have the SWI, they just have P2 star or the GRE. This uh, sequence is uh, used to um, uh, look at the uh, blood, okay, the blood product. But the what is the advantage of the SWI uh, as compared to the GRE and P2 star? As WI, we can differentiate calcification and uh, hemorrhage because of the presence of this uh, multi-phase uh, images. In, uh, this, this is the phase image of the SWI. So in this image, we can uh, differentiate whether it is calcification or, or the uh, blood product. Okay. With calcification, so the, um, the intensity will be look like a bone. If uh, if it's a blood product, it is still dark. Okay, there's, there's still booming artifact we call it. Okay. So uh, the clinical history, uh, uh, ideally MRI request should include two uh, key components <coughs> pertinent to, uh, to the clinical information, and also what is the work, uh, working diagnosis and also differential. Uh, so, uh, clinical information, uh, patient demographic data like uh, age, gender, ethnicity, and perhaps occupation uh, may help us to assess. And then uh, the main presenting complaint and also the characterization of the cognitive symptoms. So, these are, these are the, all the cognitive impairment that patient may present to us. Okay? So, attentional problems, uh, memory problems. Uh, language problems, visual or constructional problems, apraxia or echocalia, and also personality change, which is disinhibition and also aggression. In his vision, in this inhibition, patient like uh, they tak tahu dia dia buat apa, you know, mm, dia perangai pelik tiba-tiba uh, uh, pas uh, uh, mencurit dekat dekat rumah macam tu. So this is this inhibition. Okay. So all these are the cognitive impairment. So uh, for the phys physical symptoms, uh, look at the patient with the presence of like Parkinsonism uh, signs, lah, okay? tremor, rigidity, hyperkinesia, falls, uh, history of falls. So uh, this pregia, the incontinence, eye signs, okay? and also other um, maybe uh, dementia-like uh, diseases we have to uh, exclude. Okay? Uh, clinical his history is very important. My my previous lecturers uh, used to say, with a good clinical history and uh, physical examination, actually we can diagnose ninety percent of the patients with this. Okay. So uh, that's why in neurodegenerative is very very crucial the history because we need to really correlate with the MRI finding because as I said just now, the MRI findings is uh, subtle. So the time cost also is important whether it's acute or uh, slowly progressive. Any relevant family history, uh, any risk factors of uh, for differential diagnosis like smoking, hypertension, diabetes, stroke. It, at the end of uh, the presentation, I will give uh, about two cases, uh, interesting cases to uh, you guys. Okay, and also the toxic exposures like medications, alcohol, illicit substances, radiation, environmental poisons, and also the last one is uh, uh, the clearly stated the different diagnosis or study creation, such as is there any uh, suspected caudate uh, atrophy. So this is the brief 
neurogenesis of how the neurogeneration occur in uh, in uh, uh, human. Okay, so uh, aging, uh, deregulation of the um, oxidoreductase activities as well as the uh, incre increasing nut uh, nutrient deficiency, all these can lead to the oxidative stress on the uh, healthy neuronal uh, cell. Then uh, all these things will lead to the will lead to the DNA damage, uh, lipid peroxidation, protein oxidation, and also microbial uh, activation. So and all these factors uh, will lead to the genetic uh, and epigenetic deregulation. Also, the deregulation of the neurotrophic uh, factors and also neurotransmitters, and also damage in the cell membranes with the loss of mitochondrial function. And uh, it also can cause increase in the neuroinflammation, deregulation of cytokines, and also chemokines uh, secretions. And all these factors, all these three factors, lead to the uh, increasing neurodegeneration. So this is an important analytical structure that um, uh, we always assess in uh, the neurodegenerative disease. Okay. So this is the hippocampus. Okay. Uh, we will measure that later on. I will uh, touch a bit on the scoring of the measurements, the hippocampal height, okay, uh, and volume is important. This is the engine system. This is a correct. Uh, this is a coronal image on the left, okay, like you are looking at the patient front to front, okay, so this is uh, on the left side, hippocampus, this is a temporal horn, so correct fissure is here, temporal horn is here, this is the caudate nucleus, okay, this is the parahippocampal gyrus, and also this is the collateral sulcus. All these structures is important in um, uh, to classify the uh, classification of the neurodegenerative disease. So classification of the neurodegenerative disease can be classified according to the primary clinical features such as dementia, Parkinsonism, or motor neuron disease. It also can be classified uh, based on the anatomic distribution or the principal molecular abnormality, which is the pro uh, protein deposition, whether intracellular or extracellular protein deposition. Okay. So later on, I will uh, talk to uh, this uh, the anatomic and principal molecular abnormality uh classification i will touch a bit on it but uh, for us normally we use the pre, uh, primary clinical features uh, classification okay <clears throat> so there are four major types of uh, neurodegenerative uh, dementias so uh, the alzheimer uh, dementia uh, vascular dementia lewy body dementia and also frontotemporal uh, loba dementia so this is uh, based on the primary clinical features list. Huh? Uh, like I said, but dementia, Parkinsonism, or motor neuron disease. So I will talk about dementia first. Okay. So uh, Alzheimer uh, disease accounts for approximately 60% of all dementia. Okay. So uh, uh, the vascular uh, dementia, Lewy body, and also FTD uh, account for remaining 40% of the cases. So importantly, vascular disease may predispose to some uh, individuals to acquire Alzheimer disease or may exacerbate the clinical cause of the disease. So the type of dementia in a major determinant of uh, dementia progress. Okay, so that's why the clinical history is important. Okay, so uh, Alzheimer and the frontal, uh, frontal temporal dementia typically progress slowly. Uh, Lewy body typically progress rapidly and also uh, vascular dementia progresses in a uh, stair-step uh, fashion and not at all if the underlying vascular disease is controlled. Uh, so clinical profiles can vary depending on the subtype of the dementia such as in Alzheimer's disease, we have sporadic type, we have familial type. Okay? Rapidly progressing Alzheimer patients uh, often experience onset at the early age and uh, present with aphasia as an early signs of the disease. 
uh, both uh, Alzheimer and also FDLD account for the important subgroup of progressive illnesses, which is the primary progressive atheism, in which a language disorder is often the initial. Finally, within each type or subtype, the severity of dementia is an important indication of the stage of disease early, middle, or late. <coughs> so again, uh, we go back to the anatomy just now. Remember the structure. So um, for MRI findings in dementia, uh, MRI, uh, we have uh, all these uh, 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 signs that we have to look for. Okay, this is all the important signs. So, uh, hippocampal atrophy, temporal atrophy, frontal atrophy, parietal atrophy, uh, lacuna impacts, uh, white matter changes, and also strategic impacts. Okay, uh, so uh, such as, uh, there are four groups this now, like dementia, uh, uh, as I told you just now. So, Alzheimer, vascular, FDLD, and also Lewy body. So, you can see here. Uh, for example, the Alzheimer's disease, the hippocampal uh, atrophy, the hippocampal atrophy is marked in Alzheimer, but not so marked, uh, not so marked in vascular and also FTLD, and absent in Lewy body. So this is how we uh, try to classify the uh, neurodegenerative dementia. For example, for vascular dementia, so vascular dementia is the second most common after the Alzheimer. Okay, so we see here we, uh, the lacuna impact is more marked in more marked in uh, vascular dementia and also the white matter changes. Okay, and also the strategic impacts only present in the vascular dementia, but not in other types of dementia. So scoring systems and measurement are useful to support the diagnosis and to assess the severity of the affected structure on MRI. So some of the more common scoring systems include Tavika scale, uh, Codem score, the MTA score, or medial temporal lobe atrophy score, as well as the global cortical atrophy scale. So a number of measurements ratios are also useful, uh, such as mid brain to pons area ratio or uh, PSP and also uh, Magnetic Resonance Frequency Nism Index or MRPI Index for the PSP as well. So I will touch on it later on. So all these scales are uh, important as the different uh, uh, structures abnormality just now. Okay. So uh, let's say if the uh, GCA scale is uh, high, so uh, it indicates the global atrophy, so the differentials that we should think of is vascular dementia and also normal aging. Okay, if the MTA scale is predominant, so we have to go towards Alzheimer and also FTLD. If there is frontal atrophy, is FTLD. Uh, parietal uh, atrophy, we use a quadrant score to assess. So it's a uh, uh, if it's a high, so we and we call it as Patient's presentation, we will think of Alzheimer. Okay, for the white matter changes, the uh, we use a Pazaka scale, so uh, it's uh, predominant in the vascular dementia. So remember, there are two, four, and two scales. So um, this is an um, image uh, of the pre-senile uh, uh, Alzheimer with normal hippocampus and uh, severe parietal atrophy. This is the hippocampus okay, on coronal uh, image, okay, normal height, and this is the parietal uh, atrophy. Okay, you can see it's marked here. So structural uh, MRI in um, FPLD syndrome, there is a marked enclosed uh, areas of focal uh, lobar atrophy in characteristic. So this is the this one to be. I think I need to write, write it. Which one? 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 Which
So um, this is a A. Uh, there is a uh, there is a mark uh, areas of the uh, front uh, focal and lobar atrophy here. Okay, and then uh, in uh, behavior behavioral uh, variant uh, FTLB, uh, right frontal atrophy is a characteristic um, with a relative sparing of the posterior structures. Okay, so. Uh, this is the FTLB. This is a temporal lobe. It's now uh, Dr. Prafia already uh, explained to you the different region of the brain. Okay. So in uh, semantic uh, variant primary progressive aspasia, there is a left anterior temporal atrophy. So this is the uh, atrophy. As you can see here, all the sun side in other areas are quite okay. As compared to shear, there is a widening. This is a several sun side, we call it. Okay. So uh, is, there is a widening of the sun side. Uh, in a, a semantic uh, uh, so uh, in E and F, okay, for the E, F, e and F, uh, there is a non confer agrimatic uh, variant primary progressive aphasia. Uh, patient have a degeneration of the inferior frontal gyrus and adjacent uh, structures. So this is an area of the atrophy. Okay. So uh, we need uh, to review all the sequences, all the uh, sections for us to uh, diagnose uh, the atrophy uh, thoroughly. Later on, I will tell you uh, during my case presentation why. Okay. So uh, this is another score, which is the MTA score. So as you can see here, uh, MTA uh, zero, no atrophy. Okay. Uh, MTA1, there is a widening of the uh, correct tissue. Uh, okay. So MTA2, also widening of the uh, temporal horn uh, of the lateral uh, ventricle. Okay. So this is the uh, temporal horn. As compared to the MTA1, just now just the correct fissure. Uh, fissure. But MTA2, we have the widening of the temporal horn. So MTA uh, uh, score 3. Moderate loss of the hippocampal, hippocampal uh, volume. Uh, so as you can see here, um, the height as compared to uh, the rest, okay, the height of the hippocampal here is uh, reduced already. So for small, uh, for severe volume loss of the hippocampus, okay, you can see here there is a thinning of the hippocampus and widening, mark widening of the uh, temporal horn and also uh, the correct uh, fissure. So, as you can see here, with the high MTA uh, score, uh, Alzheimer is present in almost in hundred percent. Okay, so uh, vascular uh, slightly less, about eighty seven percent. Lewy body sixty two percent. Okay, so uh, this is how we uh, why the scoring is important for us to uh, assess the the different uh, dementia. So this is another uh, score, uh, which is uh, what we call quadrum score. Okay. Uh, so quadrum score is to assess the parietal atrophy. Okay. We have a grade zero, grade one, and grade two. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, how the grading uh, differences in zero, one, two, uh, and three. Okay. So this is another scale for the class scale. For the white metal lesions in uh, vascular dementia. So we have a grading also, as a one, two, three. Depends on the severity of the lesions, the hyperintense lesion in the white metal. Okay, uh, Dr. Pia already uh, told you just now, this is the white metal, right? So the outer one is the uh, cortex or gray metal. So this is uh, <laughs> the strategic infarctions in vascular dementia. So uh, we have to look at is there any area of infarctions? And uh, if, uh, with the presence of the uh, strategic infarctions, it supports the diagnosis of vascular uh, dementia. This is the uh, the sorry, the GCA, uh, the Global uh, uh, Cortical Atrophy Scale. Okay, uh, this is how we scale the, uh, uh, the global atrophy. So, uh, after the dementia, the second group is the Parkinson plus syndrome. Okay. 
So Parkinson plus syndrome is a loose group of neurodegenerative disorder. They are characterized by the features of Parkinson disease, but with other neurological symptoms and signs. They have a poor response to levodopa, uh, unlike the, the typical uh, Parkinson, and uh, mostly have a fairly characteristic neuroimaging features. So conditions include PSP, progressive supranuclear palsy, MSA, uh, dementia of the Lewy body, and so on and so forth. So um, in addition to the systemic, uh, systematic uh, going through each scan, so we have uh, some uh, disease will manifest with uh, specific signs, okay, such as hummingbird uh, sign in PSP, Mickey Mouse sign, morning glory sign in, all in PSP, uh, hot cross bun, sign, uh, cross bun sign in MSA, and also reversal of a normal P2 signal of putamen versus globus pallidus in MSA. So um, PSP is also known as an atypical Parkinsonian, uh, Parkinsonian syndrome. So pronounced, uh, there is a pronounced atrophy of the midbrain which uh, accounts for that it, a typical upward haze uh, paralysis. So um, this is uh, because of the uh, atrophy of the uh, uh, midbrain. You can see here, there is a hummingbird sign, what we call this, okay? Macam paroh burung, uh, okay? So this is uh, indicates uh, PSP. So we have to measure the midbrain to, uh, uh, mid to pons uh, ratio. For this. So another uh, Parkinson uh, plus syndrome is MSA. Uh, MSA also they call a typical Parkinson. Okay, MSA is a rare neurological disorder characterized by the combination of Parkinsonism, cerebella, pyramidal signs, also autonomic dysfunction. So there are uh, there are classification for MSA. Uh, MSA C, T, or A. Okay, so. Uh, the MSA uh, pronounce, uh, there is a pronounced cerebellar atrophy and severe atrophy of the uh, pons. Okay? So in MSAP, low T2 uh, signal intensity, dorsal lateral putamen, and slit light increase signal intensity in putamen. Okay? So I just show you some uh, uh, findings in MSA. You can see a global atrophy as a uh, presence of the uh, widening of the uh, cerebellar salsa and the prominent polia. So uh, this is the hot cross bun, cross bun sign in MSA. You can see here, macam kalau uh, kita potato bread lah kan. Okay. So uh, present uh, in the uh, pons area. Okay. So dementia of the body is responsible for about uh, approximately 25% of dementia and belong to the atypical Parkinson uh, syndrome. So the clinical manifestation can be similar to Alzheimer or dementia associated with Parkinson's disease. So patients typically present with one of the three symptoms, uh, complex, uh, which are the detailed visual hallucination, Parkinson-like symptoms, and fluctuation in uh, alertness uh, and also attention. Okay. So the role of imaging is limited in the body. So usually the MR of the brain is normal, including the hippocampus. But this finding is important uh, as it enables us to differentiate the disease from the Alzheimer disease, the main, which is the main differential diagnosis. So this is the uh, Lewy body dementia with a normal uh, hippocampus uh, appearance. Okay. So um, another classification, uh, some use uh, anatomic distribution of the neurodegeneration. Okay, so, so as you see here, uh, degeneration involving the substantia nigra and the basal ganglia. Okay, they uh, so they they characterize the uh, based on the anatomical distribution of the uh, uh, atrophy. And some they use the uh, principal molecular abnormality. Okay, uh, so depend. Uh, this is based on the deposition of the uh, proteins uh, in the uh, body. Whether is it extracellular or intracellular depositions, so it's a very complex uh, classification. Okay, so this is uh, another uh, how they classify based on the molecular uh, classification, which is the extracellular and also intracellular. Okay, so this is the uh, our first case, fifty-three years old uh, Chinese gentleman, ADL independent, 
So she's only 53. Uh, previously works as engineer. Uh, however, lost his job since MCO in 2020. He's he a smoker, non-alcohol drinker. Previously no, not known medical illness. Patient presented with worsening memory impairment uh, since actually MCO. Otherwise, no limb weakness or numbness, no abnormal movement, no recent uh, aggressive behavior changes, and no history of trauma, fall, no history of fitting or seizure, no hypo or hyperthyroidism, no sleeping difficulty, no family history of Alzheimer's disease. Mother passed away due to brain tumor. So the uh, initial diagnosis was early onset dementia for investigation. And differential diagnosis is the depressive disorder because he, he lost his job. Uh, so the, the MMSC uh, is uh, MOCA and DAS is, uh, is the uh, how they assess the patient clinically, okay, uh, using the scores, different scores. So MMSC is quite low, and MOCA also uh, middle, and the uh, patient have a mild depression, okay, no hallucination, no delusion. Uh, on no psychotic uh, symptoms okay, to exclude functional brain disorder. And uh, eye contact, okay. MOCA 10 uh, on a patient when patients uh, came to the clinic, MOCA was 10. Uh, and MRI outside was reported initially as global cerebral, cerebral atrophy. Okay. So, but patients have no, no medical illness. Okay. So, uh, so when we revise back the diagnosis, our diagnosis, uh, possibly, early, possibly early onset of dementia uh, to discuss regarding MRI to look for frontotemporal dementia, okay, and also differential of possi possible Alzheimer's disease. Uh, but the patient's age is quite young. So this is the uh, MRI when we look at the axial. Like it does look like global uh, cortical atrophy, but when we look back at our sagittal and we notice here. There is atrophy of the parietal area actually. Okay, so it's uh, it's quite marked as compared to other lobes. So the final diagnosis is Alzheimer's disease. Okay, so this is another case. Sixty-seven years old uh, lady, uncontrolled diabetes, hypertension, IHD, and newly diagnosed paroxysmal uh, uh, atrial fibrillation. Okay, patient was treated as the IA and mild stroke upon discharge from the neuro ward. And uh, MRI stroke protocol was done because here we have the, our hospital is a stroke center. So uh, patient admitted under stroke code. So we do the MRI stroke protocol. This is a, a different with the neurodegenerative protocol. So on a stroke protocol, MRI no acute infarct. We, uh, they can see left parietal old bleed with encephalo uh, malacia. And the CT brain uh, repeated. Uh, there is an old bleed with encephalo malacia changes at the left parietal. So the presenting history, uh, we uh, look at the history again. This right-sided body numbness, weakness, worsening numbness. So all symptoms are stroke uh, symptoms, okay? No slept speech, presence of mild facial asymmetry, and claim unable to walk due to weakness. Patient claim patient, uh, patient had on and off abnormal gait since one week prior to admission, but a claim not so much on admission. Okay, the NIHS score, this is a score for a uh, stroke patient, so it's quite low, and M MMSC is uh, 90. Uh, so the MRI indication to look for neurodegeneration, query cause, query dementia. So this is uh, uh, when we are thinking, uh, when the diagnosis is stroke, okay? so our, our thought will be towards stroke. Okay? So when we see here, okay, la, the encephalomalacia, okay? Uh, consistent with stroke, something like that. Okay, so we just like, okay, stroke, okay lah, the hemorrhage is okay. Okay, but we we didn't look at carefully at the other phase. So as a SWI have uh, different phases. Okay, this is the uh, magnitude. This is the uh, maximum intensity projection image, and this is the phase image. Okay, so we just look at one one sequence. Okay, so okay lah, the hemorrhage. So this is the stroke, but um, initially, our diagnosis before the conference was vascular dementia, okay, because presence of uh, infarct and then. But we we said why the white matter changes not so much, okay, and patient under underlying uh, diabetes and hypertension. So we look at the other sequence carefully back, then we notice there is multiple 
uh, small hemorrhagic areas at the periphery of the uh, both uh, parietal occipital region. Okay, so so with these findings, the diagnosis is cerebral amyloid uh, deposition. Okay, the CAA patient with CAA also can present with uh, dementia, so in between dementia. So with this, I end my presentation. Thank you for your attention. This is my email in case you have questions. Okay, so yeah, thank you.